I'm Patrick from Valencia Community College. I'm a clinical adjunct instructor for the respiratory program. Today we're going to do a demonstration of uh, oral endotracheal intubation on a mannequin. Before we actually intubate the mannequin, we need to prepare for our intubation. Um, we have some equipment here that we're going to need. First of all, you're going to need PPE, some protective eyewear like these goggles. We're going to need a set of disposable gloves. We're also going to need a working manual resuscitator bag with a oxygen reservoir so that we can deliver as close to 100% oxygen as possible. And we're going to need a mask. It needs to be soft and make a good seal on the patient's face. We're going to have to have a couple of sized endotracheal tubes. It's good to have a backup as well in case you can't get it in. Uh, for males, we usually use a size 8.0 and for a female patient and adult, we use a 7.5. We have to have a stylet as well. A stylet guides the endotracheal tube through the airway and it also allows you to manipulate the tube and you slide it in like this and then you can move your endotracheal tube and it'll stay in one place. We're also going to have a 10 cc syringe and that's to blow up the balloon once we're intubated so we can inflate the cuff and secure the airway. It's good before you do the intubation to check your cuff while it's still in the package so it remains aseptic by pressing on it like that to make sure it's not leaking anywhere and then deflate the cuff. After we intubate the patient, we're also going to need an entitl CO2 adapter, some way to determine that we have CO2 exchange. Um, we have the laryngoscope blades for the procedure itself. You always want to make sure that your laryngoscope blades are working, the light is nice and bright. Usually have like a Mac 3 and 4. And these are the straight blades, the Miller blades. We usually have a Miller 3 and 4 and you want to check those blades too. Make sure they're all working and they have nice bright lights. You also need to have working suction and a Yankauer tip suction would be appropriate for suction out the mouth if there's any secretions. And we have some tape here to secure the airway. Cloth tape is very good tape to use. And I already have it set up here on the mannequin head. But normally you would make it up ahead of time and lay it somewhere. And now we're ready. We're now preparing to orally intubate the mannequin head here. Uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to pre-oxygenate the patient. We're going to place an oral airway into the mouth before we do that. What you do is you take your fingers and you sweep the lips out of the way. You place this oral airway in sideways. And once you get it all the way in, turn it upright and it falls right into place. We're going to put our manual resuscitator bag with the mask and face on the patient's face and we're going to make a seal and we're going to make like a C with our hand and put our two fingers under the chin and just give a little tilt and we're going to begin to ventilate the patient. And we're going to ventilate the patient with 100% or close to 100% oxygen for about 30 seconds. Okay, now that we've pre-oxygenated our patient, we're going to take out the oral airway. Our tube's already prepared. We have the stylet in place. We've already checked the balloon to make sure that it will inflate. Got the working laryngoscope blade. We have a Miller blade, so we're going to go onto the right side of the mouth here and go in down the base of the tongue. And with the Miller blade, we're going to actually go underneath the epiglottis and lift the entire epiglottis up in a straight upward motion, not rocking on the teeth which are above the blade. I'm going to take out the endotracheal tube now and I'm going to place the endotracheal tube down the right side. I'm going to visualize the vocal cords and I'm going to pass the tube directly just past the vocal cords and into the airway. And I'm going to place the tube at about 24 centimeters at the lip. That's usually good for an adult. I'm going to pull the stylet out of the endotracheal tube at this time keeping my fingers around the tube is not to dislodge the airway. I'm going to take my syringe with the 10 cc's. I'm going to inflate the balloon. I'm 
Now that we've intubated the patient, we're going to have to ventilate the patient. The cuff has already been inflated. I'm going to attach an entitled CO2 adapter, and that's to confirm placement of the endotracheal tube. I'm going to begin to ventilate the patient. I should see a change in this adapter to a color of yellow. And I'm going to listen over the lungs and over the belly to confirm placement as well. Once placement is confirmed, we're going to secure the airway, so I'm going to remove the manual resuscitator bag for a moment, and I'm going to quickly to secure this airway. I want to make sure and not tape the lip to the endotracheal tube, otherwise you'll damage the skin of the lip and you could tear it. So you just want a nice snug fit, not too tight. There's several different ways to tape an endotracheal tube. We'll follow the policy your hospital has. We use cloth tape and it holds the airway real nicely. Notice I'm taping around the endotracheal tube, but I'm not taping the patient's lip to the tube. And after we've attached the tape, we'll attach our manual resuscitator bag back. We'll begin to ventilate the patient. Now this is a model of what you'll view when you do um, oral endotracheal intubations. Um, this is actually the lower teeth of the mouth and the tongue is here and you see the base of the tongue and if you go down there you'll see the epiglottis below it and between the tongue and the epiglottis is a space and that little space is called the vollecula. If you're below the epiglottis and follow my finger you'll start to see the airway, the vocal cords right there and just below the vocal cords, of course, under here would be the esophagus. Um, I'm going to talk to you about the blade placement. You have two types of blades. The first one I'm going to talk about is the Macintosh blade. And no matter what size Macintosh blade you have, the placement of the blade is the same. Um, basically, this blade is going to go down the base of the tongue on the right-hand side. And the blade is going to fit right between the epiglottis and the base of the tongue, and that's the vollecula. And then when you pull straight up, you're actually visualizing the vocal cords. On the other hand, we also have the Miller blade, which is a different type of blade, and no matter what size Miller blade you have, the Miller blade is placed in the same manner every time as well, except in the Miller, instead of using that space, the vollecula, we're going to actually pass it down the right side, down the base of the tongue, we're going to put the blade directly underneath the epiglottis itself, and we're going to lift the whole thing up, the epiglottis and the tongue, and we're going to visualize the vocal cords. No matter what blades you're using, when you're visualizing the vocal cords, you're going to pass that endotracheal tube down the right side, and you're going to pass it, and you're going to want to see the vocal cords, and you're going to pass that endotracheal tube, and you watch the cuff, you want the cuff to go just past the cords itself. And that usually confirms proper placement of the endotracheal tube. 